often get asked what supplements I take on a vegan diet. I try to remember to mention it in what I ate today is just briefly in text, but I thought it would be nice to have just one place where you can go if you're interested um, and kind of more detail on what I take. So yeah, this is basically what I've been doing for the last six years or so. Before I get to that, B12. Every single vegan should supplement for B12. Plants are not a good source. Jack Norris at veganhealth.org has a bunch of information on this, including how much to take, as well as a routine for those who have been vegan for a while but haven't been supplementing. Also, I'm not a doctor or a dietitian, but it is a good idea to let your doctor know of any supplements you take or intend to take. Even though most vitamins and minerals are perfectly safe, there are some that can be toxic at certain levels and can even interact with certain medications. Finally, this isn't sponsored. Just thought I'd mention that since I'm going to be talking about specific brands that I take. I take a multi like every other day because I know my diet's not perfect. I know I fall short on at least a few things. Vitamin E, uh, maybe iodine, maybe selenium. I take the Diva or Deva brand. I take their prenatal because I'm prone to anemia due to heavy periods. I'm not pregnant. I'm not trying to get pregnant. Sometimes I forget to explicitly state that this is for iron reasons. I have taken this while pregnant though, which is why I feel comfortable sticking with this brand. I took it during both pregnancies and both times my iron levels were awesome. And it is super cheap compared to a lot of other vegan multis, which can be 20 or even $30 a month. This right now on Amazon is $14 for a 90 day supply. The one thing I don't like is the taste. It is foul. Both the prenatal and the multi are just disgusting. The multi I think is like green. I think it has a spirulina thing. The prenatal is yellow. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's gross. So I have to take it with like a juice, either the V8 strawberry banana juice or just some orange juice. Just something to cover up the taste. I get very little sun and I don't get a lot of vitamin D from the food I eat or from the multi from the Deva prenatal that I take. So I like to take a little bit of extra vitamin D. I take one of these every other day or so. Like all of the vegan D3 supplements, this one, the doctor's best uses VitaShine. I haven't personally verified like for me that it improves or maintains good vitamin D levels, but there are a bunch of comments actually bunch of Amazon reviews from people saying that it improved their levels. That's good enough for me, honestly, <laughs> especially since I am getting vitamin D from other sources. And again, great price, $10 for 60. Pretty good. I eat a lot of ALA from hemp seeds, canola oil, soy milk, stuff like that. So I'm not really concerned about EPA, but I am mildly concerned about DHA given poor conversion. I have a whole video on DHA for those interested. Anyway, doctor's best again, and I take two of these every other day or so. Definitely more expensive, but typical for DHA supplements, $23 for 60. They don't taste like anything though, at least in my experience. I mean, I usually drink them with a little bit of juice, but it's just like a sip and I'm not like burping up algae fish kind of taste. In my experience, it's pretty hard to meet the RDA for choline, at least for ladies, since we tend to eat less food in general. Now, whether or not we actually need to meet the RDA is not really clear. In fact, choline doesn't actually have an RDA. Instead, it has an adequate intake. This is what is used when there's not enough evidence to establish an RDA. No one really knows what the average person needs to consume in order to avoid deficiencies. Certainly not what amount is optimal, only that like don't eat less than 50 milligrams. That's that's very bad. I'm not sure how you could actually do that on like a normal food diet, how you would get less than 50. I don't know, but don't do it. That said, it does seem that choline like folate plays a role in preventing neural tube defects. The evidence is not as strong as it is for folate, but it does make sense given choline's function in the body. So as a lady who definitely could get pregnant and definitely would have the baby if I got pregnant, just being honest, uh, I choose to take some extra choline. That's when levels matter most before and during early pregnancy. 
Anyway, I take this super cheap 500 milligram one every other day. Y'all know I love protein powder. I use it almost every single day. I love the Vega Made Simple. All four of the flavors are delicious. There's no stevia or any artificial flavoring. Nothing wrong with artificial flavoring. I just don't like when it's overused. I hate stevia. Even sucralose, which I like when it's overused in the pro Ugh, it's just disgusting. So I really like the Vega Made Simple. It's just sugar, and pea protein, a little bit of coconut, I think. It is extremely expensive though. Now I did just find this one from Whole Foods and it's just like one I used to buy from Kroger before they discontinued it. I think I bought the last ones they had from the store. It was on closeout, but it was just soy protein and vanilla, no sweetener or anything. It was awesome. And yeah, this one is, is awesome as well. Hopefully they will not discontinue it. Protein powder is not necessary, of course, but I like it for the convenience. I find that it's much easier for me to make a smoothie with protein powder and get, you know, 30 plus grams of protein than to get that same amount of protein from Whole Foods. And I find it way easier to eat less calories when I'm eating lots of protein. Finally, fortified foods. So the main and only one I eat every day, for like every single day, <laughs> would be calcium fortified soy milk. I love the silk unsweetened. I love the silk unsweetened vanilla. They don't have it in stores anymore. I think maybe you can still get it from Amazon Fresh. So I just get the unsweetened. It has some B12 and some vitamin D as well. But yeah, the main reason I use it is because it's, it's yummy. It's good in smoothies and cereal and stuff and for calcium. I do not eat nearly enough dark leafy greens to get enough calcium. Other than that, nutritional yeast on popcorn, which I have. A lot, you guys know if you watch my one eight days. Great source of B vitamins, including B12, protein as well. Although, I mean, you're not eating a whole lot of it, so you're only gonna get like a few grams, but still. Occasionally mock meats that are fortified with things like B12. Quaker. <laughs> I just remembered Quaker Life cereal. That shit has everything. So I think that's it. Kind of a lot. I guess, I don't know, I've been doing it so long, it doesn't really seem like a, a whole lot to me. <laughs> and again, most of the stuff is like an every other day thing. But again, the, the main, the, the big one, the one that there's really no question about, no controversy or anything is B12. If you're vegan, you need to take a B12 supplement. I was thinking about doing a supplements that I don't take because there are obviously a lot of supplements slash superfoods that are very popular within the vegan world. Um, that list would probably be a lot longer <laughs> than the supplements I do take list. Let me know if you would like to see that and uh, I guess some supplements that you can that you can think of. Some popular ones, you know, currently popular. And thanks again for watching. If you liked it, give a like, hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload. You can subscribe, of course. You can support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And I will have a new video, hopefully very soon. I feel dumb in this shirt. <laughs> Why do I feel so dumb in this shirt? It's too, what is it? I feel like I'm, am I, like I'm going to a, like a beachy thing? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I look really stupid in this shirt. Well, too late now. Oh, shit. I remember why I stopped wearing eyeliner. It hurts. And putting it on was so terrible because I, I guess I haven't worn it in quite a while. And so I haven't, I guess I'm just not used to it anymore. But oh, it was, it was awful. I kept having to stop like, huh. And then my eye was watering and it's just like, wearing away. Oh, Jesus. I think maybe my eyeliner days are over.